Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan, the Death Star. It's not a moon. It's one of the most devastating weapons ever conceived by science fiction. Have you ever wondered what would happen if the Death Star one day appeared over our own planet? How would humanity react? Well, here's our little hypothetical story, if that ever happened. 100,000 miles above the Earth, a large spherical battle station jumps out of hyperspace and slowly moves towards the planet. By the time it reaches 600 miles above the surface of the planet, it goes into orbit. The battle station is visible in the sky as a massive construct casting a giant shadow wherever it goes and causing eclipses of the sun and moon for seconds at a time. It takes only a little more than an hour and a half for it to complete a full rotation around the Earth. NASA's Near Earth Objects Division is completely stunned. How could their extensive planetary network of satellites and telescopes have failed to detect an object this large until it was within 100,000 miles of the planet's surface? A small underfunded agency known as the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs suddenly is thrust into the limelight. They alone had prepared thoroughly for this type of situation, but in all honesty, no one could really be prepared for what was about to happen in the next few days. Within hours, close-up detailed photos of the battle station appear on the internet and on the front pages of several publications. It's very clear in the photos that the battle station is bristling with all different types of weapons and placements. The governments of Earth had no way of covering this up. This wasn't some kind of crash landing in a remote part of the world. Within 24 hours, the alien ship had orbited the planet several times, crossing over major population centers across the world. National leaders enacted emergency measures to ensure panic didn't break out. Militaries were put on high alert and reserves were called up from the civilian populace. The United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs holds press conference after press conference. Clearly, they are overwhelmed and unprepared for the task ahead of them. Their agency was created as an afterthought, a neglected contingency that no one thought would ever be used. Their primary mission, which was to make contact with these visitors, was clearly something they weren't capable of. The battle station was in orbit 600 miles over the surface of the planet. While that's only a little further than the distance between Boston and DC, in space, every mile above our lower atmosphere is painstakingly gained. Gone were the rockets and infinite budgets of the space race era. Gone were the enormous Saturn V rockets which were able to propel man to the moon. Gone were the reusable space shuttles, but in truth, even they weren't designed to go any higher than 350 miles above the sea level. What manned missions we had left today were only designed to reach the ISS, which was orbiting at just over 250 miles above sea level. Conflict had always brought out the best and worst of humankind, and now decades of peace have caused a serious decline in man's ability to reach the heavens. But some people wondered, even if we managed to launch a manned or unmanned mission to the giant alien ship, what then? How would they dock with the structure? Will the aliens consider the rocket a threat and destroy it before it reaches it? For now, all the Earthlings could do would be to wait and monitor the station and hope to intercept some kind of signal or communication. The initial excitement brought by the arrival of the giant alien vessel begins to dull. Tension begins to build as the Death Star continues to linger silently above the planet. Nations begin to eye their traditional enemies with wariness. The Americans worry that North Korea will launch an ICBM into space. The EU looks warily at Russia and wonders if they'll start an intergalactic war. The media, in response to their viewers' desperate need for answers and a 24-hour news cycle, begin creating more stories out of thin air. Journalists speculate whether Donald Trump will try to attack the Death Star without Congress's approval, and what the consequences of that will be. Retired generals analyze the weapons and placements on the battle station and debate what its uses are. Individuals who claim to have been abducted by aliens in prior years are now vindicated and invited onto respected news shows. The internet is on fire as conspiracy theorists, cultists, and preppers begin shaping the recent events to fit their own narrative. As hysteria erupts around the planet, order already has begun to break down in less developed and authoritative countries. Children are taken out of their schools and workers leave their jobs to be home with their families. Those with no one just go out and party like it's the end of the world. Bunkers are prepared and the top leadership of many countries are split apart and emergency contingency plans are enacted. Early in the morning, as the Death Star passes overhead, an 8.2 magnitude earthquake hits the Punjab region of Pakistan. 
Rumors and conspiracies begin creeping up, and people start blaming the space station for the earthquake. Some people say that it's some kind of alien seismic weapon. Others are saying the space station's mass is so large that its gravity is affecting the tectonic plates. But geological surveys show that this was a natural event, a powerful earthquake that's timing just coincided with the passing of the Death Star. Its mass, even at this distance, is barely large enough to affect the tides, let alone create giant earthquakes. Finally, 12 hours after the earthquake, something happens. The Death Star begins sending out small little objects that spread across the entire planet. These small robotic vehicles have several spindly attachments and hover just above the ground. Militaries across the planet descend on these landing zones and erect barriers around them. The UN calls for restraint, but rival nations begin pointing fingers at each other. They fear that their opponents will attack these robot emissaries and perhaps gain some kind of new technology or weapon. But then reports come in from all around the world. The giant space station is withdrawing. Planet-wide, a sense of calm returns as the Death Star's brooding shadow retreats into the night. It's early in the morning over the northern Atlantic. A green glow emerges high in the sky. At first, it looks like a laser pointer, but it rapidly grows larger and larger until it covers the sky like an aurora borealis. But it doesn't stop there. The sky brightens. A sunrise occurs several hours earlier than it should have. And in a split second, the intensity of the light is blinding. In London, the sky glows green in the west for a split second. And then a massive wave of fire passes over the sky as the atmosphere is literally burned away. A loud rumble is heard and a shockwave of heat and energy pass over, decimating all living life on the surface of the planet. Although the ground is covered in daylight from the sun, the sky looks like night as the surface of the planet is exposed to vacuum. But that also lasts for just a moment. As Death Star's ray penetrates the center of the Earth, the very gravity that holds this planet together is overwhelmed, and the planet explodes outwards into trillions of pieces. The Empire had used the Earth as the testing grounds for their new battle station. The Death Star had never used all of its reactors at the same time, and it turned out to be a massive success. The destructive power was unprecedented. A fleet of star destroyers could have rendered a planet uninhabited in short order, but to destroy a planet and turn it into dust, to have enough power to overcome the actual gravity that was holding all this matter together, that was a different type of message altogether. A message that made people obey and tremble in fear. And better yet, the planet they had just destroyed, Sol 3, was the same size as another planet, Alderaan. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed our little scenario. Every now and then we like to mix fiction with a bit of real life and just a little bit of science and create these stories. Uh, special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there. Guys, please do remember Mark Hamill is getting old, so if a Death Star ever does appear, it's probably up to one of you guys to launch a proton torpedo up an exhaust pipe. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.